Okay, so for those of you who follow my channel, you may know that I'm currently in the process of restoring a Macintosh SE from 1988, and unfortunately the unit I bought on eBay did not come with a keyboard or a mouse, so I had to buy those separately, and I ended up buying the Apple Keyboard 2 model M0487 and the Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2 model M2706. Unfortunately, the mouse I got is a bit newer and isn't the model of mouse that would have come with the original Macintosh SE, but it is an ADB style mouse and will work just fine with the unit. Now both the keyboard and mouse were listed as functioning units on eBay, and when I tested them on the Macintosh SE, both seemed to be working just fine with the exception of a few sticking keys on the keyboard. However, comparing them to the white case of my Macintosh SE, it was apparent that their plastics had yellowed over time, and both of them had a few scuffs and scratches and were overall pretty dirty and needed a good cleaning. So since both this keyboard and mouse already work, I thought for this video I'd do a cosmetic restoration and hopefully get them looking brand new. Okay, so the first thing I do before any disassembly is I take some alcohol and a paper towel and I spot clean both the keyboard and mouse and try to get any areas with some scuffs or scratches or high concentrations of dirt and really just try and get it as clean as possible before I take anything apart. Now for small areas like this little divot, I usually just take a small screwdriver and get into it that way. I also did the same thing for the little Apple logo on the mouse. I then took out the trackball and cleaned it as well. The mouse's cable was also dirty and I had to spend a good amount of time wiping that down with alcohol. Okay, so next comes disassembly. I started with the keyboard by just removing these three screws from the back of the keyboard and that caused the front casing to just come right off. Be careful about this power button though at the top, uh, it does just kind of fall out and is held in only by a spring. Okay, so once the front of the keyboard is removed, you can start removing these other components such as the keyboard itself and the circuit board. I started by removing these several screws that are holding down the circuit board to the back casing of the keyboard. Then you're going to want to remove these three screws that are holding the keyboard down to the back casing. Then you're going to have to remove this two-pronged connector and these two ribbon cables. Once that's done, you can just slide the keyboard itself right out. Then you can remove the circuit board by just lifting it gently from the two ADB ports. Next came removing the keys from the keyboard itself. It's pretty important to lift straight up when removing these keys because there's some plastic at the bottom that you can break off if you lift it at an angle. I don't have any fancy key remover so instead I just used a small screwdriver and I found that the best way to remove these keys is to slide the screwdriver underneath the bottom of the key while at the same time pulling from underneath the top of the key. So once the keys were removed it was pretty apparent that this keyboard had seen a lot of use back in its day. There was about a decades worth of gunk and dirt built up underneath the keys that needed to be cleaned. So I took some compressed air and blew away some of the loose dirt and then I took a vacuum cleaner and sucked up the rest. Even after that though, there was still some dirt that needed to be washed away with a wet paper towel. And that's exactly what I did. I disassembled the keyboard further and then using a wet paper towel, I cleaned up any of the remaining dirt and gunk that I could get to. And as you can see, the end result is a lot better than what I found when I removed all the keys. I also took this time to hand clean some gunk off the metal plate that was on the back of the keyboard itself. So next came disassembling the mouse. I started by removing the trackball, but when I flipped it over, I started to notice that I couldn't find any visible screws holding the mouse together. So hoping that it wasn't held together by some sort of glue or epoxy, I started feeling around the decal at the bottom of the mouse and found two divots. Sure enough, they turned out to be two hidden screws which held the mouse together. So I just ended those and it came apart easily. The inside of the mouse was a bit dusty, so I just took some compressed air to it, and then I undid two more screws to completely remove the guts from the mouse, and as you can see, these are all the components that make up the mouse. So next came the process of retrobriting the outer plastic components that had yellowed over time, and before I did any of the hydrogen peroxide treatment, I thought it would be best to first make sure that they were completely clean, and so I took them all into my bathroom and cleaned them off with some dish soap and rinsed them off in the sink. 
Once the components were dry, it was then time to start the hydrogen peroxide treatment. This will reverse the yellowing of the plastic, and I used the Salon Care 40 volume hydrogen peroxide cream that a lot of people who do retro restoration projects recommend. The retrobrite process itself is pretty easy. All you have to do is lay out plastic wrap and cover it in an even coating of the hydrogen peroxide cream. Then you take the component that you want to retrobrite and cover it in the cream as well, and make sure to get every nook and cranny of the component or else the effect will be uneven and you'll get some yellow spots. Then you just evenly wrap the component in the hydrogen peroxide cream coated plastic wrap that you'd prepared earlier. For this project I decided to treat all of the individual keys of the keyboard, the top and bottom case of the keyboard, and the two pieces that make up the mouse. Once everything was coated, I exposed the components to sunlight for at least 7 hours, making sure to routinely rotate the components and massage around the cream underneath the plastic wrap in order to ensure even exposure. Once the retrobrite process was over, it was then time to remove the hydrogen peroxide cream from the components, and so I just took them back up to the bathroom and rinsed them off thoroughly in the sink, and after that I dried them off with a towel. And once the components were 100% dry, the last thing to do was to reassemble the keyboard and mouse. Okay, so the very last thing I did was add this velcro tie to the cable of the mouse so that I can have it nice and coiled and prolong the life of the cable and the mouse itself. And here it is, the finished product of this project. As you can see, the keyboard and mouse look almost brand new. Here are some before and after pictures of the keyboard and mouse. <laughs> Thankfully, after testing the keyboard and mouse, they are still in perfect working condition. So other than that, I hope you found this video to be entertaining. I hope you hit the like button and subscribe if you want. And other than that, this has been Colonial Puppet. Have a good day.